I think all my books have been about women in one sense or another. The first book, Handful of Seawater, was really my exploration of my own grief when my mother died in 2002. In that book, there's an orphan who's looking for a woman, a mother presence in his life uh, through a bunch of younger women, which doesn't always work out. Um, and then the Jacinta Joseph series, uh, The Carib Smile, The Judge's Wife, and another book which may be called The Money Laundered. Uh, those three books are about women taking control of their lives, taking control uh, <laughs> of the entire country in, in uh, one of the books, that women seem to know how to organize communities better than men do. Um, there's a, a wonderful bank in India, the Garmin Bank, that loans to women, does micro lending to women, and they won't, they won't lend to men. They've found that men tend to waste money that's given to them, and women tend to do things that benefit their children. So uh, <laughs> there may be some wisdom there. Anyway, um, in Grenada, it was obvious to me that the women did all of the important work, uh, and the men mostly caused trouble. I thought that maybe it would be better if the men could just all be on another island somewhere, and and uh, if a woman needed to pr get pregnant, she could go, <laughs> go visit that island. And then the women could run the main island. Um, there were wonderful older men. Uh, it, it seems like the younger men are more of a problem. And of course, those are the ones that the women would be marrying if they chose to marry. Um, but I was so impressed with the women. I was impressed with their physical strength. I was impressed with their spiritual and emotional strength because they had really a lot to deal with. Um, you know, they raised the children, they did the farming, they washed clothes in the river. They, everything they did was difficult. And they had a wonderful sense of humor and grace, and I just loved them. They were just wonderful people. They are so caring and nurturing, um, not only to their own children, but really the communities. I mean, there, there was just this sense of um, nurturing the whole community. And uh, I felt nurtured. And living in the village, um, I felt like uh, uh, the women were all taking care of me. Um, they, they would stop by and drop off vegetables a few times a week. Um, and I'm, I'm emphasizing the women, but it, there, there were, uh, the older men were wonderful too. Um, I remember thinking after I'd been there for a few years, how all of my picture, you, you picture what is a beautiful woman? What is a cute child? What does a dignified man look like? Uh, you know, these, these images, these standards that we have in our head. And I realized that all of my standards had been changed. Um, the, the picture that I still have in my head of a dignified man was this old farmer that would ride past my house on his donkey. And he, ha he had this, uh, this tattered old hat that he would wear and he had a little stick that he used as a, a riding crop to to uh, tap his donkey to make it go f further. He'd have a few burlap bags and tools on, uh, you know, hanging from the donkey and he'd be on his way to his garden and at the end of the day he'd be coming back, going back the, past the house again. Um, uh, beautiful women that didn't all have all their teeth. <laughs> I mean, our, our standards change. The teachers I w worked with at the, uh, at the secondary school were, uh, 
there was just one other man and myself. Everybody else was female. And I had so much trouble uh, maintaining discipline. I, I shouldn't say that I maintained discipline. I attempted to create discipline, and I never did it. <laughs> I, I could not control these kids. Uh, but these black women, these black women teachers, they had this look. And if you've spent some time around black people, you probably know that black woman's look where they just, <laughs> and everybody just falls in line automatically. So I would be screaming and pulling my hair out and these black women would just be giving their, their quiet look. <laughs> <laughs> and the teenage boys and everybody would just sit down and do what they needed to do. They had so much control just with a look and some folded arms. And I want to say a little bit about the economic stresses on the women in the islands. And uh, this is a, a subject that I, I deal with in the Jacinta Joseph uh, series. It's, it's maybe a major theme in, in the books, how... The, the women are suffering, and uh, in the, these fictional characters uh, go about changing that, uh, changing the, the actual economy of the island. The, the women are in such dire, well, the islands are in, in dire straits, and the, the women um, probably more so, because they're the ones that are really tasked by their society with taking care of the children, which is really the main point of any society, is taking care of children and bringing them up to be uh, effective adults. The societies are so broken that women try to have as many children as possible just so one of the kids will hopefully get to the UK somehow or get to New York somehow and be able to send money home. Um, it's very sad. It's, it's as wonderful as these women are and as happy as they are and as loving as they are. Um, when you're around them, you can see the, the stress that they're under, this economic stress. Uh, the spiritual stress of, of having to struggle all the time. And uh, this is true not only of the women in the Caribbean, but women in indigenous cultures all around the world. So that's a big part of my book, and um, maybe in some way these books can help get a conversation started about solving the problems of women around the world. Thank you.